In this video, we're gonna build a checkout flow for a single product. In this case, we're gonna sell a box of chocolates from a candy store that I've already set up inside of Stripe. We're gonna use a tool from our documentation called the Integration Builder. This will allow us to download some example code and in just a couple minutes, we'll be up and running with a checkout integration. So let's get started. I'm gonna start by going into the account settings section of my dashboard and looking at the account details under my business settings. I wanna confirm that my business information is correct and that what customers will see is accurate. So I'll look at both my account details and the public details, confirming the support email, support phone number, and statement descriptors. I'll also take a look at the brand settings Notice that I've already set an icon, a logo, and some brand colors and accents that will appear in checkout when customers are going through this payment flow. Finally, I wanna confirm that customer email settings are up to date as expected. So I will toggle on successful payments and refunds and scroll down to save. That way customers will receive emails when they purchase my products. Finally, we'll head over to the product section and note that we've already created this product listing for a dark chocolate collection. So we're gonna sell a dozen pieces of our most popular 48V signature chocolate. This is the price ID that we'll use when creating the checkout session later. To get started quickly on our app, we're gonna use Stripe's Integration Builder. This is a tool in the docs that's gonna give us a fully working example of a Stripe checkout integration. You can get to the Integration Builder by going to the docs at stripe.com slash docs, clicking on payments, and then selecting the accept a payment online option. So for this example, I'm gonna use HTML on the front end and go on the server. I'll also wanna confirm that I'm still logged into my Stripe account, which we'll see in the top right. Now the Integration Builder also allows us to define a product we wanna sell. So we'll pick the chocolate confection product from the dropdown. And you'll notice that the price ID is now set in the line items here on the right. That is the price ID for this product. We'll come back and talk about that more a little later. Now we can download the full app and the code for this example will include both my API key and the price for this product that we just selected. All right, let's take a look at what's in the download. So we have a public directory with a CSS file and three HTML files. From Stripe Checkout, the customer is gonna be redirected either to success or cancel, depending on whether or not they made a purchase. Now our checkout.html page is where the customer is gonna preview their order. Let's take a look at this and we can see some HTML to display the product, but it's showing the example product, not ours. So we wanna update the image link and the product information. Right below the product div, we can see this submit button that when clicked, will call our server route, create checkout session. Before we jump into the server, let's look at our Go mod file. And you'll see that right now we're just importing Stripe Go. From server.go, you can see that my test secret key is already set. That's because I was logged into my account when I downloaded the code for the integration builder. If this isn't set to your API key, you'll need to go into the Stripe dashboard, get your API key and update this here. Our server has just one route at the moment. The one we saw referenced in checkout.html, create checkout session. This route makes an API call to Stripe to create a checkout session. Checkout sessions control what the customer sees when they're going through the payment flow. Now there's a lot of different parameters you can include in this checkout session create call, but but for this example, we're gonna keep it very simple and just talk about these required parameters. The first of these is a line items array. You use this parameter to define a list of line items the customer is gonna purchase. In this case, we're passing just one item and the integration builder has already pre-populated this with a price ID and a quantity of one. We also need to set the mode parameter on the checkout session. This tells checkout what kind of payment we're gonna be making. Today, this is set to payment because the customer is gonna make a one-time purchase of our product but it could be set to something else if we had a different pricing model. For example, if we wanted to charge customers later or set up recurring payments. The last thing we need to specify in the create call here are the URLs that Stripe will redirect our customer to from the checkout page. These are set to those success and cancel pages in our application. And once the checkout session has been created, we're gonna return a response that tells the browser to redirect to the newly created checkout session URL. 
We're going to crack open the terminal here and run go mod download github.com slash stripe slash stripe go slash v74. You'll want to look and see what the latest version of stripe go is when you're going through this tutorial. Now we can open up the browser to try things out. Let's visit localhost 4242 slash checkout.html. When we click the checkout button here, we're brought to stripe checkout and I can see the product information and enter a test card to complete the purchase. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to head over to the documentation and take a look at the other videos in this series to learn more about what you can do with Stripe Checkout. See you in the next one.